Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name is Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Grain. In today's episode, we are going to talk about Tesla full self-driving and what everybody seems to really lack the understanding of when it comes to autonomous vehicles and the Tesla approach. So I'm going to talk about some FUD videos that recently came out. We're going to talk a little bit about the stock price, and we're going to, in general, just try to make this a video of an understanding of where the problems and limitations are right now with Tesla AI, with Tesla full self-driving beta, and what needs to happen in order to get to a full autonomous solution. Now, keep in mind, we don't actually know the answers to this, so this can be me hypothesizing a little bit, but I wanna give you my perspective from an engineering point of view. Again, for those of you who don't know, uh, my background is mechanical electrical engineer engineering and then turned into software systems engineering. And so while I'm not a James Dalma or a Dr. Know-it-all who teaches AI, I believe, leave at, at Georgia University, I think, I do have some grasp of what's going on here. So with that said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's get into it. First things first, great day in the market for Tesla and for the market in general, right? So Tesla was up, NASDAQ was up, everything was essentially up. And this is, is coming off the back of um, more news about Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman, potentially raising rates by 75 basis point. So it almost sounds like they listened to the video I made yesterday and the market got bullish about it. Right? It seems like the market is already baking a lot of this stuff in. We also see oil, you know, WTI, which is what you know the U.S. is based off of, staying underneath ninety dollars. We see Brent, which is essentially the world standard, staying under a hundred dollars. So. You know, in the big scheme of things, not too bad, not too bad at all. All right, so let's talk first about some FUD, some more stuff that's out there that we're seeing. So I was watching a video with Warren Redlick the other day, and Warren Redlick essentially does what Warren does, okay? He tears apart FUD, he you know breaks things down the best he can from an engineering technical perspective. And for anyone who watches Warren's videos and think that he doesn't understand what he's talking about, I'm telling you right now, Warren actually has a pretty good grasp about what he speaks, um, at least when he speaks to what he, what he knows. All right, his understanding is, I would say, fairly advanced, especially for someone without an engineering background, which at the end of the day, an engineer, it's not a degree on the wall. It's, I mean, you notice I don't put my degrees up on the wall. It's, it's not what being an engineer is. An engineer is, is someone who is curious and learns and that has the ability to learn how to, how to learn, right? That's all it is, right? Problem solving and learning. That's all it is. So Warren clearly has the ability to do that. You have the ability to do that. So nothing we're going to talk about today isn't something you can learn about and be smarter than I am. All right, so what are we talking about? So Warren did essentially a dismantling of this FUD of some Canadian YouTuber who wanted to talk about some accidents with a Tesla and a couple motorcycles. Now, keep in mind, we don't know what actually happened here. This video goes on to essentially make the claim and act as if, and he at first says that we don't know if autopilot was on or if full self-driving beta was being used, but his entire video goes off the premise that it was being used, and the whole video is about the flaws with the vehicles. So let's start off with the very beginning. It's FSD beta. It's a level two software, and it's a ADAS system. The whole point of it is to assist you in your driving. Before you ever engage FSD beta, you have to acknowledge that you are in control at all times. You have the liability. In other words, the onus at all times is on you, the individual, the driver, the real brains behind what's going on. So if you get an accident, it's your fault. If you hit someone, it's your fault. If you kill someone, it's your fault. If you fall asleep at the wheel when you're drunk or do something crazy and flip your car over, guess what? It's your fault. This is not an autonomous vehicle. Autonomous vehicles don't exist right now. So again, the onus, the fault, the responsibility is on you, the supposed adult who has a license. So just with that alone, that entire video is dismantled because you can't blame Tesla for it. You just can't. So then he goes on to talk about why Tesla doesn't have the right setup, why they need LIDAR, why they need radars, why they need more cameras, yada, 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 all this stuff. And I just want to talk about the 
the misunderstanding that I don't know, I don't know why it's not a very hard concept to grasp. And that's why I want to make this video. LIDAR, radars, and cameras. All of them are trying to do the exact same thing. All right. I don't know how many times I've made videos talking about this. I feel like James Dalm has covered this a bunch. Dr. Know it all has talked about this a lot. It's this isn't something that's that difficult to understand. The only things that we use LiDAR for, the only things we would use radar for, the only things Tesla uses uh, cameras for, it's just to see the world. That's it. It's to take what's going on in, in the world, in the real world, and send it into the brains, okay, the neural nets of, of, the, of the vehicle, the computer, right, or the code, or the software, whatever terminology you want to use, okay? Or, listen, we're not going to go too deep here. This isn't that complicated. That's all it's for. So the question is just essentially, do you think LiDAR plus cameras is a better way to get that information into the vehicle? Do you think LiDAR, radar, and and, um, and sonar are a better way? Do you think all that with cameras is better? Do you think just cameras is a better way? This is, this, this is what people tend to debate, but the problem is they act like that is what the limiting factor is, and it's not. It's not at all, okay? Right now, and at least for Tesla, the limiting factor, it, well, actually for everybody, the limiting factor is getting the vehicle, the brains, to make the right decisions to understand its environment so it can react, all right? The differences with Waymo and Cruise and any other uh, company out there, they're, they're using a sensor suite in order to compensate for for the brains, for the software, the neural nets, the code, the software, again, whatever you want to use. They're using hardware in a sensor suite to compensate for the lack of software development that they have, right? So essentially they've all hit a, a, a ceiling and their theory, their prognosis is if we throw in more hardware to get different types of data to come in, that will allow us to get to escape velocity. Tesla has a different approach. They believe that the more sensors, the more hardware you have, the more noise you have going on. And essentially, to just really distill it to a very simple way of thinking, Elon's point is, if I have radar telling me that there's a car in front of me, but then I have my camera saying there's not a, ca a car in front of me, which one do I believe? So now we have a disagreement here. How do I know who to believe? We, we, we have two different, two different sensors here. They're saying different things. So this this is a, a contention of, 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 of ideas of what's going on in the real world. If you have LIDAR, same thing could happen. Now, the question is, when that happens, who do you trust? Well, if you think that the camera is right in that type of situation, well, then what's the point of LIDAR? What's the point of radar? Because really, you only need them for when there's a disagreement. If when there's a disagreement, you tend to fall onto the camera side of things, well, then it becomes pointless. All right, so, so that's the Tesla approach and that's what they think. Everybody else thinks you need the sensor suite. Okay, so, so that's where we are right there. It has nothing to do with, with the actual cameras or the LiDAR or the radar about the decisions the car is making. That all comes from the software. The software dictates what it's going to do based on the visual world that it sees. So a lot of people keep saying that we need LiDAR. That's the problem. We need LiDAR for full self-driving for autonomous vehicles. This just is not the case. It's a horrible understanding of the problem. The problem is not at this point viewing the surrounding world. The problem is in the software, right? The neural nets and figuring out what's the right architecture. What's the right way to go about it? Right now, Tesla is trying to move away from heuristics. So in other words, hard coding, you know, uh, C++, C, and they're trying to take all of that and move it into the neural net space. And so that's a lot of what we're seeing right now. We're seeing a lot of the heuristics move into neural nets, and we're seeing them deprecate old neural networks into new different architectures so that they can get better advancements. And we're seeing that very clear with this 10.69 release, all right? And we're seeing the iteration on that with each dot, dot level that comes out. So going back to this video about this FUD, this Canadian YouTuber decided to make this video a lot of 
production, production, you won't see my videos, a lot of extra background noise. Again, something you won't see in my videos because I really just care about getting messages out and certain content and information. That's all I really care about. I don't need to dramatize all this. You know, it, it's just pointless to me. It's, it's a waste of money and I don't, I don't do this for clicks. I, this is, this is me to engage with the community. It's me to talk about my investment journey. It's me to share my thoughts, my experience as an engineer. That's all this is for. I don't, Try to do clickbaity titles. I, I literally am trying to come from just a genuine good place to be hopefully a beacon of light of people that you can trust out on YouTube, right? Rob Mauer is someone like that. Steve, uh, Steve Mark Ryan, he's kind of a comedic, uh, you know, sarcastic version of that. But, uh, you know, Dave Lee, Warren Redlick, like these are people who are just genuine out there making good content. Dr. Know-it-all, right? Farzad, obviously. I mean, like you can just go on and on. There's so many great YouTubers out there. Um, Oracle Oracle Investments. I don't know if you guys ever uh, watched that channel, but it's it's pretty good. Um, I, I enjoy his content. So, but again, I just want to be one of those other genuine people who are out there and giving my perspective with my background, uh, with a you know very unique engineering background that I have, and so. With all this sensationalism that you see in this video, it, it definitely, you can tell the manipulation that things have. It's funny because I, I watch um, every different news channel. I'll go from Fox to CNN, MSNBC, CNBC. I like to watch it all just to see the differences. And something I've noticed is the music, okay? Like they'll, they'll play music to essentially sens sensualize, or sen sensationalize, wow, it's been a long work day. <laughs> different things they're trying to say or make you feel a, a certain way about it. But it's it's funny because if you watch BBC, you won't see any of that, and it's it's a it's a very obvious drastic difference. You know, if if you go to Europe, at least you know if I watch news in Europe, same thing. Like you you just don't see. I know BBC is British broadcast something, uh, but my point is in general, you just don't see that sensationalization. Well, I'm not gonna say that word anymore. That dramatization of the news to make you feel a certain way or to it's they're trying to deliver news, uh, hopefully. So anyways, that's what this video was about. And they're talking about how Tesla needs this camera. They need LiDAR. They need to put radar back in. And what he's talking about, just a lot of BS, really. He's talking about different focal points of the motorcycle. Anyways, the point is, the problem with Tesla's vehicles, in my opinion, again, it's just my opinion, it has nothing to do with visualizing or perceiving the world. All right, at this point, it's about decision making and getting enough data and weird quirky cases edge cases so that it can learn and iterate and decide what to do in certain situations you know there's a certain point where i don't need to know everything in the world in order to know how to react right it's there's only a certain amount of times i can get punched in the face before i learn to duck and, do and dodge i don't need to have the same person same height same direction the punch comes before i learn to maneuver out of that punch right eventually you learn it's probably a horrible analogy but you get my point so with with tesla and their approach I personally, and this is through experience, I believe they have the best approach because they get rid of the crutch. And again, not to sound like a Elon Musk lackey over here. I mean, I do have them right here, but it is a crutch. And Tesla learned that firsthand whenever they started to pull away all these sensors and they realized how bad their software actually was. And that's why they went through this whole fundamental rewrite. And they went strictly on cameras, and that's all they used to the point where they got rid of radar. Now, you hear a lot of FUD, again, with people talking about the fact that they got rid of radar. But look, they've done tests. Andre Karpathy showed it, I, I think it was during AI Day. Maybe it was during a Thomas Africa. It was one of them. But he did a whole presentation essentially showing that Tesla Vision with its neural nets was better and reacted more consistently and faster than radar did. Now, they used radar to train the neural nets, but once they were done, they were able to get rid of the radar. They do the same thing with LiDAR. Tesla still uses LiDAR on their test vehicles to, to confirm different things that the vehicle has seen. Right? We've seen those Teslas out there with the LiDAR on it, but it doesn't mean it needs it. It doesn't mean that that's what we need to get to autonomous driving. In my opinion, it is not a hardware problem. That is not the limiting factor. It is the software. It's the brains. It's the neural nets. And this is for everyone, in my opinion. Now, I say that with a grain of salt because 
I fundamentally believe that the whole LIDAR approach is wrong. If you understand what LIDAR is, essentially it's sending out um, a beam of light to a, a few points, right? It's not, it's not like, it's not as many, po it's not like you're taking a, a picture of something or a video of something where you have so much of detail and nuance and idiosyncrasies to everything you're seeing. With LIDAR, it's X amount of points on a given object bounces back and that's what it uses to understand the world around it. And from there, you, you just get ideas of like, okay, this is kind of this type of object. Okay, this is this kind of object. But you don't get the important details like, oh, that's a person that looks like they're about to walk into the street, right? That type of stuff really matters. That context is very important to get to autonomous driving. All right, so that was my thought on that. I just, I really think, think that there's not enough or there's a lot of misunderstanding out there about what the problem is. And the problem at this point isn't hardware. I don't think Tesla needs hardware for, I don't think Tesla needs new computers, new cameras. I don't think, think they need extra cameras. All they need to do is iterate on what they currently have to get it to where it needs to be. Now, don't get me wrong. Cybertruck will probably have hardware for it. Any robo taxis will probably have a different hardware version, right? Newer cameras, better computers. That's normal. And even if that was the case, it wouldn't be that much for them to change it out, all right? It would take them maybe an hour. The cameras pop out real easy, and then the computer, I mean, that takes no time to put back in, right? It's just behind the dash. So none of this is that complicated. The real hard part, the real differentiator uh, between Tesla and everybody else is the software, is the neural nets. And that's the part that it seems like nobody wants to understand because all they want to understand is what they can see, the surface level thing, right? It, it's like a lot of people with mental disorders or uh, psychopathic or not psychopath, uh, schizophrenia or anything like that, right? We, we tend to like not prioritize those people because we can't see it. Whereas if we saw someone with a broken arm or a limp, like you, you have empathy for them immediately. And again, maybe that's another bad analogy, but I think that's what we see here. People can see the hardware, they can understand the camera, they can understand LIDAR, but they can't understand their own They can't understand software. And so they lean towards what they can understand. It's, it's a horrible human flaw, in my opinion. All right. So I actually forgot what all I want to talk about today. We talked about the stock. We talked about this FUD piece that Warren Redlick just completely dismantled. I don't want to mention what it is or who it is, this YouTuber, because I don't want to give more eyes that way. If you're going to watch any of it, I highly recommend you go to Warren Redlick's channel and watch watch it through there. That way we don't give this, this, uh, this clown any uh, extra advertisement or anything. Um, on top of that, uh, there are a couple things uh, I want to draw attention to. Uh, Farzad, um, Farzad had a, a, uh, episode today, uh, part two with, uh, Tesla Boomer Mama, I think that's her name, um, uh, and Gary Black. And I'm about halfway through excellent video so far. Um, uh, once I'm done here, I'm going to go and finish watching that. Highly recommend you guys check it out. And yeah, I think that's about all I want to cover today. Um, I plan on getting uh, 10.6, I, I plan on testing out uh, FSD beta when the dot two uh, release comes out. So uh, so to keep an eye out for that. Hopefully it comes out this weekend and then I'll, I'll be testing all weekend, probably into next week. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. I think I covered everything. Again, this wasn't supposed to be a long video. I'm already at 20 minutes, it looks like here. I just want to hop on. It's just something that's just been bothering me so much is this horrible understanding of what LIDAR, cameras, radar, what they're used for. Again, they are the simple part. That is the simple part of all of this. The hard part is the software. Remember that, all right? Look, ma making, making your phone this, this is not the hard part. The hardware, th this is the easy part. What is What makes Apple so different? It's the operating system, it's the software, it's the way the software integrates with the hardware, right? This is what sets Apple apart from everybody. Okay, and that's what Tesla's doing, All right? Nokia, they could make a they could make a phone. They could make one that looks identical and works from a hardware perspective identical to Apple. But guess what? Guess what? They couldn't do this. They couldn't come up with the software. They couldn't catch up the tech. And you know, to quote Gary Black from the Farzad interview I saw today, um, you know, he he had a friend who bought an Audi, and Gary's like, what? Like, don't you understand? The tech is so far behind. And his friend's response was, Yeah, but don't you think Audi's going to catch up? And Gary's like, no, you, why do you think it's that easy? It's not. 
This is the challenge for everybody. The technology, the software, the prowess, the margins, the vertical integration. Guys, Tesla's on another level. And it's about time people wake up and see this. And I think it's going to happen in the next month or two. I think we're going to see it as, as long as macros, you know, cooperate. All right. I'm rambling now. <laughs> I can do this all day. I think I need to do a live stream soon because I want more interaction from you guys. Uh, sometimes these aren't as fun as when I get to talk to you guys, although those don't get as many views. But again, like I said, I don't really care about views. This one I care about because I want to get this out there. I want people to understand what matters for Thomas vehicles at this point is not the hardware. It's the software. Any issues, any problems right now, it's software, at least when it comes to Tesla. The hardware is sufficient in my opinion. All right, we're going to leave it there. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that bell. Love you all. Peace.